So now, church planting and the tent ministry. This has to do with part-time ministry. Hallelujah. The tent ministry is part-time ministry. It means doing a secular work and pastoring a church. It has to do with the lay ministry. It has to do with supporting yourself and doing the work of God. Jesus Christ and the apostles built the church by sacrificing and we must sacrifice for the work to be done. Hallelujah. It is possible to combine secular work and the ministry. Daniel was a vice president. He was in the parliament. He was a prime minister. At the same time, he was an effective man of God. In Daniel 2 verse 14, he was in the parliament. In Daniel 5 verse 29, he was the vice president. In Daniel 6 verse 1 to 2, he was the prime minister. Hallelujah. Both full-time ministry and part-time are necessary for this end-time church growth agenda. In 1 Corinthians 9 verse 14 and Acts 18 verse 1 to 4. We need full-time pastors and what? Part-time pastors. The third ministry or part-time ministry boosts the effectivity and is set a great model for believers to follow. In 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 7 to 9, Apostle Paul said, behave like me, be like me. You can be fruitful in the ministry as well as fruitful in secular work. You can be fruitful in the ministry and be fruitful in secular work. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 and 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. I am who I am by the grace of God. Now, Apostle Paul was a part-time pastor. Praise God. He was doing his tent ministry and preaching at some point, not all throughout his ministry, as a, as, at some point of his ministry. Many of the churches that we have became big by using the lay ministry. Example is the redeemed church of God. Majority of the pastors there are what? Part-time pastors. If not, there is no way to be able to pay the salary of these staffs, everyone. That is the way the redeemed church grew by part-time ministry. Christ's embassy is the same thing. I think we is full-time now. Everybody is full-time. But many times, there are many, Young Cho grew his church by part-time ministry. Everybody was doing part-time. Then there is a level where the person has to join full-time. Are we together? But as a church that we are in now, we cannot take full-time pastor. We don't have one full-time. And only full-time even without salary. So what we have as an option now is to use the part-time. Praise God. You can be a doctor and still pastor a church. There are many doctors that are pastoring churches. Part-time churches. You can be a banker and pastor a church. I have a banker in that church we went to. That ministry we went to. That guy is a banker. They have service on Saturdays by 4 p.m. and Sunday 8 a.m. They cannot have midweek service on Wednesday because the guy is a banker. There are lawyers that are pastoring and they are still lawyers. There are engineers that are doing their engineering work and they are still lawyers. There are businessmen that are doing business work and they are still pastors. Part-time work. Come on now together. So how do you do ministry and do your part-time work? Because in the third ministry and in the part-time work, you are doing the work voluntarily and you are not being paid. You are doing the work to enhance the growth of the work. And then when the church is stable and you become a full-time pastor, then you can't be paid. But before the church gets stable, we must use the part-time ministry. So you can do your work and still do the work of the ministry. Are we together? None of your responsibility will be taken away from you. As a matter of fact, a young church that has less than 25 people do not have a full-time pastor. Because 25 people will not be able to cut out for the need of a man of God. His, his house rent, his feeding, his clothes with three children, and then the church need to buy instruments, many things. The church will never grow like that. So the only option we have is people do part-time. I was in the part-time ministry. I did part-time. But now, 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 I'm only a full-time by portfolio, but in reality, I'm a part-time myself. 
I was doing laundry work. It was laundry work I was doing. I'm pastoring. Because I had an instruction from God not to take a full job. But I was doing laundry because I need to eat. And the church is not paying me. And at that time, there was no prophet offering. So I was doing laundry work. At the same time, started the church. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we need the use, we to use the part time system. All the work we are doing, we will still do the same work while the church is growing. You are volunteering to make the church grow and God will bless the works of your hand. You see that God will bless your work more because you are doing His work. Do you understand? Your own personal work has given you money. God will bless it more so that you'll be able to do the work of God. But as the church grows, the church, let's say you have 500 people, 1,000 people, it will be difficult to do to pastor 1,000 people like the part-time pastor. Because at that level, they need more of your attention. You understand? And then 1,000 people can take care of your pastor. It's true. At that level, you can be on that salary. They can take care of you. Then you resign from your work and then focus on pastoring full-time. But before the church grow, we have to use the part-time system. Some people call it the tent ministry. Some people call it what? The lay ministry. Now, core keys about tent ministry. Number one, it comes at great cost and sacrifice and also great reward. I'm just, let, let me just use uh, people that are into transport among us that are into, let's say you are pastoring a church and then you are into the transport business. That means you travel from Lagos to Abuja and then you have service on Wednesday and then you have a message to preach and then you have a Sunday message to preach and you have follow up to do. You have a, like, you, it comes, you don't have leisure time at all. That will be, it will take a lot from you. It will take a lot. Come on, are we together? Because you are working to raise money and then you have a congregation to pastor. If you are doing enterprises, <laughs> It will take a lot of your time. Hallelujah. As we are doing it, sometimes I, 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 I see some people with their enterprises with their phones. Even during meetings. But because it requires a lot. Because the people you are working for don't know you are a pastor. And they don't care. All they want is their work to be done. Sometimes, I can remember when Dr. Penn was around, he'd be saying, he has a surgery, they will be in the service, and then they will call him, there's a surgery urgently. Right in the service, and then they don't know whether you're a pastor, you're a pastor in your church, there's surgery now, and you have to move. So, if you are doing the part-time ministry, know that you make a lot of sacrifices. Come on, now together. And with great sacrifice come great reward. Great sacrifice, great reward. Say with me, great sacrifice, great reward. When you have to kill your selfishness and think corporate, don't only think about your family, think about our corporate success. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. Philippians chapter 2, verse 20. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So as a part-time pastor, you must kill selfishness. Thinking about yourself, your own. Some people think about me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. What is there for me? What is in it for me? If I do this, what will I get from it? Number three, you need great wisdom to thrive and survive in the part-time ministry. In Matthew 10, 16, the Bible says, you be wise as serpent. You know, first lady was asking me a question. As a banker, how can a, past a banker pastor a church? And I was trying to answer her at home. I said, see, as a banker, bankers go to work. I mean, they, they leave, let's say, 6 a.m. If you are sure of transport, most of, most, most of them, that means if you are leaving home by 6 a.m., that means you, may, you must be up by 5 Okay, if you are a man, you can be up by 5.30. But if you are a lady, you have to be up by 5. Huh? The woman, 4.30. Okay, or even 4.30. Because before she bath, put the mascara, put all those things, it's already one hour. But as a man, it can be 15 minutes, and then you are set in the next 15 minutes. 
Just wake up, sha sha sha, and then uh, tie your shirt, tie your tie, and then in ten minutes a man is ready. So that means they wake up at five a.m. and then after after the official closing hour, some of them used to come back home by seven or eight p.m. and then they come back. I am Monday, Saturday, and then if you are on ATM duty, that means on Saturday you have to go to work. And then you have a midweek service, and then you have a Sunday service. So what is the wisdom that a banker can use? Do you think? Can you think about the wisdom? What wisdom can a banker use to be able to be effective in the ministry? I need a suggestion. No, I've, I've answered you. You don't answer. Hallelujah. What wisdom can a banker use? To what? No, it's kind of involve spirituality in the work. You can see that now. There's some banks that don't allow you use listen to messages while doing the work. You know it's true. Some don't allow. So how can you be involved in spirituality in the work? How can you involve it? Because you cannot say you are studying your Bible while it's working. People are waiting for money on the line to count money. So how will you do? I need, I need us to talk, please. What do you think a banker can do as a pastor that has a midweek service and he has a Sunday, and he has to make the grass green on Sunday morning. <laughs> and when he come back, he has children. What can the banker do? Yeah, Pastor D. Okay. Yes. Hello. <laughs> it's a bit time. Like, you should organize BG for himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's working Monday to Friday. So which means you on Friday night? With himself. Like during the weekend, we separate the weekend for God. Like, what weekend. weekend start on Friday? So if, is, is it we do vigil on Saturday night? And then Sunday is service. So how can he do? Well, technology technology has advanced. Yes. We can have uh ear peace. Ear peace. Yes. It, it do not allow that in back. Yes, all right. This is the last one. Yes, Pastor Ben. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, with what you teach us, yes. like personal interaction with Jesus, like one thing he can do, like speaking in tongue. While walking. While walking. Under his breath. Yes. He yes. does not actually affect anything. Yes. Body with, like yes. he will perpetually be on spirituality. Like, okay. you know, by listening to message, like prayer. Yes. And when he has a break, because they will have a break, they can't work. Lunch break, work. yes. Lunch break. Maybe you can do a lot of meditation mm. about the topic. And in the morning, we wake up. You say something about sacrifice. Yes. You have to sacrifice more because he's not. Uh, not Don't forget, he has a wife. Oh. Yes, you have a wife in the morning. <laughs> Need to bless her. All those kind of things. <laughs> so. Lunch break is how many hours? 30 minutes break, 30 minutes. So, I think with. And don't forget that his message is preaching, not praying in tongues on Sunday morning. His message. <laughs> like. <laughs> yes, I'm hearing you, sir. Like, the, like what you said, sir. Yes. Like, I believe I've been, like, one of the interactions I have with you. Yes. Concerning the message. Not as if in Jamaica will come and. Drop the message, yes. Like, so far, the heart is as posture towards the message. Mm. God will start speaking. Yes. Like when God speaks, He can document. Like yes. He can just pin it down before He can establish them. Yes. So, so when will He establish them? <laughs> he can establish them in the night. Like in the night that is coming back from 7 p.m. tired from banking work. Like, like what you you may mention something earlier on. Like if you come back from work and he's not going anywhere, he has mm. his wife. Yes. Even anything they want to do, like if they eat early and sleep early. You'll be able to do a lot of things, like a lot of things will last. All right, that's okay. Thank you very much, sir. You see, the truth is, the key word is sacrifice. A minister, what you need is, you need to be spiritual. How many of you notice that if you pray for long hours, there's a feeling you have? That is what we call spirituality. Like, there's a feeling you have when you pray for long. And you can pray and don't How much money? Like, you can do it under your breath. For prayer, and then you can also be meditating. Like he told about meditation, meditating. There's a man called Minister Lawrence. I don't know if ever heard about the man that carried God's presence. His name is Lawrence. You can be meditating, thinking about the scripture you're preaching. And then you can have your phone. If you have my tab now, if you pick any of my phone, 
Let me show you something. If you see my tab, anytime I am praying, God speaks to me. And I know it's the same with you too. These are all my notes. You will see. Today is what? Today is what is this date? 19th. Okay. You see the date here, November 16th. This is what God spoke to me and I wrote it down. 11th, 7th. Like you keep writing it bit by bit. Sometimes here, some of the things here are messages. Sometimes God will give you only a part of a message and you expect you to develop the rest. So while you are praying, while you are work, I believe some of them, they allow them with their phones, some. Or you have a note, somehow you just pen it down. Then on Saturday, you see, what I am preaching December, I have prepared it already. What I am preaching in January is what I am preparing in December. What I'm, so you, must, you must prepare ahead. Because let me tell you something, it's not as if all man of God is only on Sunday morning God will say, preach this topic. Or it's only on Saturday night. God. No, God will tell you the topic far ahead of time. Come on, Bishop David Redepo said, I heard from my father and the Lord, he said that Bishop David Redepo told him that he knows what he's preaching for the past, for the next five years. That his sermon note for five years is ready. Yeah. Five years is ready. So you can prepare ahead. So that what you do is review. Like this note, they were in my notes since, since last week. Yesterday in the night, I reviewed it, I reviewed it, I reviewed it, I reviewed it. Review means you look at the point, meditate, read the scripture, and show it is there, confirm, and then that is the review before the service. Briefly. And you'll be effective. Come on, we understanding? So you need wisdom. Let's say you're into transport business. How can you do? You have to arrange your travel so that the day you're having a service, you are back in the city. You understand? So everywhere, if you're a business person, anywhere there is wisdom skills you can do to be able to survive. In the part-time ministry. Is it true? May the Lord give us all the wisdom to survive in our own in the name of Jesus Christ. And the ministry will take a lot from you. And then sometimes the ministry will enable you to fight idleness. It will take away your leisure moment. You will not have time to watch Premier League. <laughs> no time to watch Champions League. No time to go to spa. Especially when the church is starting and then you have to run and raise money to take away your pleasure. But when the church works, you will get the benefits. Hallelujah. How and when to flow in the tent ministry? That is how to flow in the part-time ministry. Number one, when it is the only way to fulfill government policies to live in certain parts of the nations. Let's say, for instance, we are starting a church in America. Now, America is not Nigeria that anybody can enter anytime and go anywhere he wants to go. The police can stop you anywhere and say, show me your ID card. Where are you coming from? Where is your permit? All those kind of things. So, in some nations, you need to have a working permit and you are working before you can even start a church. Do you understand? So, let's say you are not a citizen of that nation. The first thing to do is go there, get a work, and then start the church. The reason why you have legal permission to stay in that city is that work you are doing. If they want to catch you and they say, what are you doing? Your work is a pastor. Enter the train. Move. Deportee. So sometimes you need, even if you don't want to do a part-time ministry, you need to be working because you need a working permit to stay in certain places. Come on, are you understanding me? Like Germany, especially the US and all those European nations. Number two, so that you as the minister, you will help yourself and avoid becoming a burden to your members and to the local church. In 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be what? chargeable to any of you. So as a minister starting a young church to avoid becoming a burden to your members. The truth is you can become a burden to your members. I need to use an example. Um, this lady was accusing me this morning about something. She said, how come the all of a sudden See, if as a pastor, is the church that's providing my soaps. Because the church is that the, 
However, it shows the members, the, the, there's a best person assigned to the pastor. They will come and take stock of what you have. Why don't you have your red oil? I finish red oil. Tissue paper, number two, tissue paper. So they come to your house, pastor. Today they drop three tissue paper. Then they come on Sunday and see all the tissue, tissue paper has finished. Yes, pastor. <laughs> this is business with toilet. I don't know if you're me. They gave you a bag of rice last two weeks. And then they came this week. And the bag. And he says fasting. Let him explain the fasting and the bag of rice. Because it's not balancing. See, you have become a burden to the church. It's Lee, if you want to respect yourself and eat what you have and do what you want, earn your own money. If I finish 17 tissue of paper, nobody will talk. If I finish 14 soaps, it's my own money. You are not a burden to the church. I don't know if you are getting me. So that you will not be a burden. Because if I should put my burden on checking and encounter center, people may complain somehow. <laughs> yeah. Because you'll be buying my, my wife's birthday cake. You'll buy our anniversary cake. You'll give us weekend bonus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Weekend bonus. And then we have pastor's tips. You become a burden. Wardrobe allowance. Hey! Like by December, I'll be thinking of new set of suits. I knew a new set of native. Last year, my design was this. This year, this design. Blue, brown, red, yellow color. Like, and I need different colors. Then I need a change of shoes. It's true. You will become a, I will become a burden to the church. Is that not true? So what not take care of myself as the church grows? So I will not be a burden to the church. Number three. is, is help you survive without being paid by the church. Without being paid, you will survive. I'm not being paid. None of us is being paid. All of us, nobody here is being paid. But I wish I'm being paid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number four. It helped the church to grow. To build projects. To buy equipment. To be able to send missionaries. Because if we are sending missionaries now, or we are sending people to plant churches, there are basic things you must take care for them. I don't know if you are together. Let's say you are sending somebody to Lagos. Now you cannot tell it to go and live under the bridge. At least you must provide accommodation. You must provide. There are certain things you must take care for that person. You cannot just say now the Lord be with you and then lay on the person. Now move. No. Even banks or institutions don't do like that. If they are moving, you are transferring. You take care of your transport. There are certain things you must take care of. You must provide. There are certain things you must provide. If the church can do that, then as 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 as. As, as, as a pastor, you must be able to live as a part of so that the church can do it. To buy musical equipment are actually expensive. And building projects are expensive. So the church will never grow if everybody is on salary and the church is young. Is that not true? Yes. It will never grow. Because it's like as the chicken is giving bad, we're eating. We're waiting for the next egg. It's rubbing, fry, 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 fry. The egg is rubbing, fry, 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 fry. See, that we will not have chickens again after a while. And then the members will be complaining. All our tithe and offering. Because there's a member that knew that he dropped 200,000 naira last month. This month again, he dropped 2,000. That's 400. They are calculating. No members are calculate. They say, only me alone. How much is my tithe after four months? 200,000 naira. And nothing has changed in the church. And every time they are complaining about money for foil. Where is my money going to... <laughs> Come on, there's an enemy. There's a genuine question to ask. Where is, because at least, let's assume that nobody else has given in the church. Only my own. For 800,000. Proof of the money. But when they say that you buy a keyboard, you send a church, they know that the money is being used somewhere. They can see. Come on, now we together. Hallelujah. Number next. It helps the minister to be free from all men. The control, the grip, and the manipulation of big donors in the church. Hallelujah. As a young minister, you will be free from manipulators. There are people that when they give you money, they will manipulate you. Sincerely. 
as a minister of the gospel out together the truth is that people that when they give you money they use the money to manipulate you even in men in relationship is true so if you want to be free from control and manipulation have your own money so that when somebody gives you is a blessing for the person not that you are begging you will never be free of the grip and the control of people when you are always depending on them to take care of you but when you have your own money you are free of their control praise the lord number next number six the 10 ministry enable you to achieve kingdom mandate and other pursuit because as a part-time pastor you have your own personal life vision maybe you want to build a house you want to buy a car other things don't forget the bible says seek first your the kingdom of god that means that there's something you should seek second do you remember there was a time i preached on secondary pursuits was it last year or this year i don't remember last year because when the bible says seek first that means there are some things you can seek second but when you seek the kingdom first what is the next thing to seek for so as a man of god all of us have visions don't you have vision for your life Maybe you have vision to build four houses for your children. You have vision to have a house in, in Bahamas. You have a vision to take your wife to a particular artist did a swimming pool in America and then imported his water from Bahamas. Like, the swimming pool is in USA, but the water in the swimming pool is imported from Bahamas. Because the water in Bahamas is, is, is crystal clear. It's like blue. You don't understand the water? Have you, you don't understand what I'm talking about? Yes. So he, <laughs> he imported the water from the Bahamas. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is wealth. <laughs> that is wealth and prosperity. So, all the secondary things you want to do, you can do them. Maybe you want to take care of your wife. You have a vision of buying six clothes for your wife every month. You cannot do that with church money. So, you need to have independent money. Independent. Hallelujah. The truth is that some people can relate better with 10 ministers. There are people that don't believe that full-time ministry is work. You say, all pastors who want to get a job, what are they in church? What are they doing? So when they hear that you are also working in a hospital, yes, they like you. This is a real man of God. There are people that are like that and will remain like that. Is it true? Yes. So when they know that you are like that, you attract that kind of people and they will come, they can easily relate with you there because believe you, you are working like them. They are working like me. The man is a, the man is a teacher. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you are teaching and come up, you are blessing him in short and then he is receiving. He too, you must look for another work and be doing. But that means you are doing two works. It's really difficult to believe that some people believe that ministry is not work. The Bible says, edifying the same for the work of the ministry clearly from the scripture for the work of the ministry some people say jesus was a carpenter i want to ask you a question was jesus a carpenter well, let's answer was jesus a carpenter huh he said yes it was his father that was a carpenter <laughs> And then I believe he helped his father. But we, have, we don't have a scripture to prove that Jesus was doing was ministry. So after the mountain of the feelings, then, hey, I'm on your drawer. Okay, I'm coming. So Jesus will be free priest and then he's, he's doing drawer. Like drawer, you know drawer. After, service, after the sermon of the mount, there was a bed that he, was, he has not finished work. Charlie, Peter, I'm coming. Let me finish that project. Then he's just balancing the leg, using tape to measure the bed. No, Jesus is not doing that. Come on, no. Look at three. The Bible says there are people that were taking care of his bills. So the people that can relate better, just they need the ten minutes. No, what are you doing? Wow. As a matter of fact, when you are working, you can help you attract many people from your work. Can come to my church. You understand? Yes. Never forget that you can succeed like Apostle Paul in the tenth ministry. You can succeed like Apostle Paul. You can do well. By functioning as a part-time minister. Hallelujah. And I pray for the work of your hands. Pastors that the Lord will bless it. That it will be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. 
it will lead you to be more than enough that you may not even need anything because the lord has fully blessed the work of your hands in the name of jesus christ i declare that in the next four months of your life may you have supernatural harvest like never before may you have supernatural open doors like never before may the lord make you more comfortable than he has ever done as a minister as a leader and as a worker in the name of jesus we have prayed amen